Hi, today I'm going to show you how to install the free and open source software for video conferencing Jitsi Meet on a Raspberry Pi. I'm going to use Raspberry Pi 4. Jitsi Meet is a free and open source online encrypted video conferencing software. The client runs directly in a web browser via WebRTC or mobile applications for Android and iOS. The server side of Jitsi Meet requires 64-bit operating system. This is an example how you can put Jitsi Meet on a Raspberry Pi in your home and connect it to your Wi-Fi router. Your internet service provider gives a public IP address of your router. You need to use a service like Dynamic DNS to assign a domain name to your IP address so that your friends and family can access your Jitsi Meet instance from outside your local area network through the internet. You also need an SSL certificate for secure communication. You can obtain such certificate for free from services such as Let's Encrypt. Another aspect of the network configuration is the port forwarding. You need to configure all ports required by Jitsi Meet to be forwarded from your Raspberry Pi through your Wi-Fi router to the internet. Now, let's have a look at the exact steps how to get Jitsi Meet on Raspberry Pi. Step number one, flash 64-bit GNU Linux distribution on a micro SD card for the Raspberry Pi. Recently, it was announced that the Raspberry Pi OS will support 64-bit mode, but it's still in beta. Therefore, I'm going to use Ubuntu 2004, 64-bit. The easiest way to flash Ubuntu on a micro SD card for your Raspberry Pi is to use Raspberry Pi Imager. This is a free and open source software application that you can download from raspberrypi.org. Have a look at my other video about it to learn all the details. It is very important to say that this 64-bit image of Ubuntu will run only on compatible 64-bit Raspberry Pis such as Raspberry Pi 3 and 4. It will not work on older Raspberry Pi versions such as Raspberry Pi 0, Raspberry Pi 1 or Raspberry Pi 2. Raspberry Pi Imager first downloads the image and then flashes it on a micro SD card. Keep in mind that Raspberry Pi Imager keeps the downloaded image in the cache so the next time when you need to flash a micro SD card it's gonna be faster. In general the whole process takes a few minutes depending on your internet connectivity when you need to download the image. I'm flashing an Ubuntu 64-bit server image which is headless. This means that it doesn't have a graphical user interface and consumes less resources. Step number two, attach peripheral devices to your Raspberry Pi, plug the micro SD card and boot it. As I said, this Ubuntu is headless image, therefore I don't need a mouse. I'm attaching a keyboard and a monitor just for the initial setup. After that, I won't need them. Once again, I repeat that for this tutorial, it is very important to have a Raspberry Pi with a 64-bit system on a chip, such as Raspberry Pi 3, 4, or eventually newer versions in future. All the Raspberry Pis, including Raspberry Pi 0, have a 32-bit system on a chip, which means that this 64-bit image won't boot at all. At the moment, the best option is to use Raspberry Pi 4 with a lot of RAM. For example, the latest Raspberry Pi 4 comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM. Step number three. Find the IP address of the Raspberry Pi in your local area network and configure dynamic DNS. I have connected my Raspberry Pi to my Wi-Fi router directly via an Ethernet cable because this is faster than a Wi-Fi connection. Over DHCP, the router provides automatically an IP address to the Raspberry Pi in my local area network. I can find this IP address directly from the command line interface on the Raspberry Pi or as I'm doing it right now from the web interface of my Wi-Fi router. I'm gonna need this local IP address to access remotely the Raspberry Pi and to do some network configurations. The second part in this step is to configure a free dynamic DNS service. It will map a domain name to the public IP address of your Wi-Fi router provided by the internet service provider. The default firmware of my 
Asus RTAC64U Wi-Fi router has some built-in advanced features such as setting up dynamic DNS. However, don't worry if your Wi-Fi router doesn't support this feature. You can still do the same by visiting the website of one of the many free dynamic DNS services. Another advanced feature of my Wi-Fi router is that it can generate an SSL certificate for me from Let's Encrypt. I'm gonna use this and just click the export button to keep and save this SSL certificate. Step number four, let's log in remotely to the Raspberry Pi and install Jitsi Mir from the command line interface. Out of the box, the 64-bit Ubuntu image supports Secure Shell SSH, which allows me to easily access the Raspberry Pi remotely from a terminal. The very first thing that I'm going to be asked by the Ubuntu is to change the default password of the default user Ubuntu. So the default user is Ubuntu, the default password is Ubuntu, and I'm going to change the password to something more secure. Immediately after that, I'm going to copy the SSL certificate that I exported from my Wi-Fi router to the Raspberry Pi. Skip this step if you don't want to use your own SSL certificate. Download and add Jitsi GPG key to the list of trusted keys. Once you add it, you can safely remove the downloaded file. After that, create Jitsi repository for downloading and installing appropriate packages. Obtain the Jitsi repository by running the sudo apt update command. After that, install package Jitsi mid and all of its dependencies. During the installation process, Jitsi Mead will ask you to either use your own SSL certificate or to create one for you. As you have already seen, I have my own SSL certificate which I've copied to the Raspberry Pi, therefore I'm selecting the option to use it and I'm typing in the exact path to the certificate and to the key. The whole installation takes a few minutes. The time may vary depending on your internet download speed. One more thing, check the firewall configurations on your Ubuntu and Raspberry Pi. By default, the firewall is disabled. Step number five is all about networking. We need to do port forwarding. Again, open a web browser and load the web interface of your Wi-Fi router. Navigate to the section for configuring ports and port forwarding. Different Wi-Fi routers have different user interfaces, so probably on your Wi-Fi router it's gonna look different but it's the same procedure. Jitsi Mir requires several ports. TCP port 443 is for the general access to the Jitsi Mir server with Let's Encrypt SSL certificate. TCP port 80 is for SSL certificate verification or renewal with Let's Encrypt. The Jitsi Video Bridge requires UDP port 10,000. For fallback network video audio communication, TCP port 4443 is used. This is the most important step. If the ports are not properly configured and the port forwarding is not working, this means that people outside of your local area network will not be able to access your Jitsi Meet server. Network configurations are not Raspberry Pi specific. You still need to do them if you're running Jitsi Meet on a PC with Intel or AMD CPU. Congratulations, we have successfully set up Jitsi Meet on a Raspberry Pi and now it's time to give it a try. I'm launching a web browser on my laptop and I am accessing the front end of the Jitsi Meet server installed on my Raspberry Pi. The first thing that I'm gonna do is to create a room for the video conference. I'm just typing a random name for the room and the conference is live. Now, from my smartphone, I'm going to connect to the same Jitsi Meet instance that is running on the Raspberry Pi and I'm going to enter the same room. Here we go, it's working. I have joined the same video conferencing room from my laptop and from my smartphone. Keep in mind that Jitsi Meet heavily relies on WebRTC, which is very well supported in Chrome web browser. You may have troubles if you're trying to run it on your computer from Firefox web browser. For the smartphones, Jitsi Meet has a client mobile application for both Android and iOS. Before shooting this video, I've downloaded the Android application on my smartphone. 
There are a lot of things that may go wrong during the network setup or the installation of Jitsi Meet on a Raspberry Pi. Here are some common tips and tricks for troubleshooting. First of all, use a 64-bit GNU Linux distribution and if you're using Raspberry Pi, make sure that the Raspberry Pi is 64-bit in terms of hardware. As of today, this means Raspberry Pi 3 or 4. If your friends and family cannot access your Jitsi Meet server from outside of your local area network, make sure that the port forwarding is properly set and double check all configurations in your Wi-Fi router. Check logs and the status of systemd services of Prosody, Gcofo and Jitsi Video Bridge. If you have any questions, please write a comment below in this video or visit the Jitsi Meet community forums. At the end of this video, it's time for some conclusions. Jitsi Meet is a free and open source software for video conferencing that can be self-hosted, which means that you can install an instance on your own machine, even on a Raspberry Pi. Jitsi Meet may require very complicated network setup. Although it's possible to install Jitsi Meet on 64-bit ARM device, such as our Raspberry Pi, it is recommended to use an Intel or IMD x86-64 machine, just because it is tested on them. According to commands in the Jitsi Meet community forums from people working for Jitsi Meet, it's not a good idea to run Jitsi Meet on a Raspberry Pi. However, you see that's possible to do it. I have to admit that Jitsi Meet on Raspberry Pi as of the moment is not as stable as running it on my PC with an Intel CPU. I'm a huge fan of embedded devices and I hope that in near future things will improve and Jitsi Meet will be more stable on things like Raspberry Pi or other devices with ARM or even RISC systems on a chip. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you find it useful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I have already published a lot of other videos about free and open source software as well as open source hardware. In near future, I'm planning to make more videos about Jitsi Meet. Please let me know what you think. Thanks again and stay tuned for new videos.